Hi guys, it's Taya and welcome back to my channel. Today starts the new series on my channel all about self-development. I am super, super excited to start this series and I have so many ideas and I really, really hope it inspires you to grow and learn with me as I go along with this journey with you. Along, along with this journey? Along, along this journey with you, that makes more sense. So today's topic of choice is about being your true authentic self around anyone. This has always been a struggle for me, but I feel like recently I've discovered some techniques and ways that really, really help me to show my true self and not worry as much about what other people think. Now you may have heard in the past some different techniques and ways of not caring about what people think, but I'm going to get really into the psychology of it and the way our brain works. So I've done so much research about this and I've listened to many podcasts and I feel prepared that I can give you some great advice that really gets to the root of the issue. Now, of course, this is not a substitute for therapy. If you feel like you are in need of a therapist, there are some great options online that I will link below. But with that being said, let's dive into the first episode in this series. Now, the deeper reason about why we tend to hide our true selves around other people is based on fear of judgment from other people. Now, whether you are consciously aware of it or or not, if you have the fear of being yourself, this means that you are changing your true self to meet what you think the other people want to see. Now, of course, this can be really damaging because it makes you think that your true self is not good enough. But let's dive even deeper. These fears of judgment can actually stem from our insecurities of ourselves. Now, you wouldn't think, oh, I wonder if they think I'm stupid or dumb, if you had never thought that about yourself. So when we discover this, this means that we have a little bit more work to do on our relationship with ourselves rather than the relationship with, with, with other people. Let me give an example. If you were out in public or with a friend or something and you made a goofy joke, if your friend didn't laugh, then maybe you would think, oh, they thought that my joke was weird. Maybe I shouldn't be goofy, but being goofy is really something that I like to do. But because they didn't like it and it made me feel awkward, I'm just going to change myself in order to make me feel better. I'm sure that we've all been in a situation like that b before. Now, of course, it's not your fault when that does happen. That's just the connection that, that, that our mind is making based on what our senses are seeing around us. So let's dive into how we can battle th this and how we can really become our true selves in any situation. Tip number one is to identify these negative patterns of thinking and identify why they do not benefit you. Your mind is trained to look out for your survival 24 seven. Now, of course, we aren't living in a society where we need to be on alert all the time. So since our minds are kind of trained in this survival way, we can oftentimes take the smallest thing like a negative emotion or a negative thought as a threat. 
when in reality it's not really a life-threatening situation but because we still ha have those survival instincts in our mind we can identify oh this made me fe feel bad this is a threat and i don't want to feel that 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 way again now i want you to think about a situation that you feel like you can't truly be yourself in whether that's at your work with your friends with co-workers at school wherever that is really really think about it and think about what storyline are you telling yourself don't worry if you've never done this but before it can oftentimes take a few minutes to really d dig d deep and identify what that storyline is for example with me oftentimes my storyline i tell myself is that when people notice my stutter they will think i'm dumb so think of a situation and think of that automatic train of thought that goes in your mind when you are in that situation. Now, when you do have this storyline picked out, identify if this storyline, sentence, self-thought, whatever it is, does this really benefit me? Does it truly benefit you by thinking that way about yourself in that situation? My guess is that it probably doesn't. Remind yourself that criticizing your, yourself only hurts yourself. It doesn't do anything about the external situation that is going on. It doesn't do anything about the past that already happened. And it doesn't do anything about the future that's about to happen. Oftentimes, our brains really like to be right. And that's all in our ego. Our ego, of course, likes to be right. So when you're constantly reminding it that what it's thinking is not correct and is not benefiting you in any way, eventually your ego will settle down and want to think in the correct way. Now let's go back to that sentence I said earlier, that self-criticism only hurts hurts yourself. Now this can be taken in a few different ways, but I want you to know that if you are taking this criticism constructively, then it can be beneficial if you're in the right mindset. Tip number two, everything is about perspective. Remember that every single experience in your past has led you into the person you are today. And there is not, not there is nothing to regret. There's nothing to there's no way of going back and changing it. So respect the, the past and know that it has brought you to where you are today. But that doesn't mean that you can't change the future. Remember that every single situation we're in, we can see it in multiple di different ways. As they always say, there is two sides to every story. Now let's go back to our last point, talking about that one storyline that we always tell ourselves. So my example was that when people notice I, I stutter, they will think I'm dumb. Now let's create the complete opposite of this statement. When people notice I stutter, they won't think I'm dumb. That is literally the complete opposite. Now I'm assuming that when you first say this opposing statement, your mind is going to automatically reject it because it doesn't see any evidence to support it. But in reality, our minds can sometimes be like tunnel vision. When we say one thought to ourselves multiple times, then our minds will automatically look for confirmation from our surroundings and our experiences that this thought is true. Now this kind of goes hand in hand and with affirmations and I'll probably do an entire video about that but giving your mind another 
option besides this one singular storyline that you're constantly being t told, your mind will start to look for evidence that this other train of thought, this other storyline might actually be tr tr true. And it just kind of puts into perspective that you can change your perspective on anything. Because our minds like to look for confirmation that what we're thinking is c c correct, there's a scientific term called confirmation bias where that's literally what our brain does. It's super, super interesting. Now, an example of this is when you, when you wake up and there's a few unfortunate events that happen in the m morning and you automatically think, oh, this is gonna be a bad day. And then it becomes a bad day. That is literally all about perspective. If these unfortunate events happened in the morning, but you also paid attention to the p positives, then your perspective on the day might have changed because when your mind is focusing on the bad, it will pick out the bad. When your mind is focusing on the good, it will pick out the good. So realizing this and knowing that you are capable of changing this and bringing your awareness wherever you want is really important to not feeling so judgmental about yourselves and worrying about what other people think about you. Tip number three is to get out of the habit of judging other people. Now this is super interesting because you wouldn't automatically think that the that your judgment of other people reflects on yourself but it really does after i've done some work around this i really realized that this is so true as i mentioned in the last tip we oftentimes create patterns of thinking including around our insecurity now, when we feel insecure about something, our minds obsess over it. They create tunnel vision, as I mentioned before, around this one trait. So when you are in public, you are almost training your mind to look for this one trait. So if you are insecure about your nose, then you are going to be drawn toward other people's noses and judge them based on that. So the next time you are out in public and you realize yourself judging somebody else, n n notice what that judgment is and if it can connect to you in some way. And from there, you can go on the great journey of working on yourself and your insecurities. Now, once you free yourself of these judgments, which it, in reality, we won't free ourselves completely because we are he human and we do ju judge. That's just part of our human traits i don't know once you are able to diminish it a little bit and be able to realize what these ju judgments mean then it's so much easier to see other people as equals rather than competition and you realize that everybody else is living the same experience as a person on the earth for the first time. We are all go, go, going through similar experiences and there's no need to compare because we're all experiencing this moment for the first time. So I really, really hope that you found this video helpful. If you found any of this information useful make sure to comment below and let me know which advice was the best for you i hope you are all having a wonderful day and i will see you all very very soon bye